Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys we're doing a deck profile of a deck that um, recently came out in the structure deck, I guess you could say. Now, I will mention to you guys that I'm still uh, testing this deck out, playing with it, practicing with it, getting to know the deck. I did get my ass kicked a lot of times last night when I was going to locals uh, testing this deck out, but the deck's very good. Uh, mainly, I got my ass kicked because I'm still learning the deck. I haven't played it online at all. It was pretty much, I just picked it up, built the deck and tested it out and was just playing around with it. But it's still a very good deck at the end of the day. It has very powerful plays. Though Monarchs can get brick hands or this variation of Monarchs, I know people still like playing the old variations as well. Um, but yes, it's a very solid deck. I'm still testing it out, but I'll talk about some of the things I'm thinking about. So first off, guys, we run the three Ether, the Heavenly Monarch. Um, really good card. I do love his last line of text that has saved me during certain situations uh, because some some players they'll go you know they'll be make all these plays trying to OTK you and then you'll be like ether and they'll be like I can't get over that. Damn, what a waste of resources. And then you can go on the offensive sometimes. So I do like that for his effect. His other effect is pretty good as well, but really really good card overall. So we have three of the ether. And then we run three um, Erebus. Erebus is a very good card. He's kind of, I guess I compare him to like a semi trishula esque card or a trishula like effect. Really good card overall. I do like Ether a little bit more, but um, for artwork's sake, uh, F, you know, Erebus always makes me think with his like, he's got his hand on his chin and he's, he's like, I'm bored, man. Won't somebody play me? But yeah, either way, these are your pretty much your six of your, my ten tribute monsters that you can run in the deck and they work out very well so three your uh, ether three Erebus and the cool thing is with the structure deck like I did showed told talked about with you guys you pretty much can build this entire deck for very cheap and you need no extra deck <laughs> uh, next for the mega monarchs I like running these two um, I like the Caius for mid to late game it really come come in handy especially if you tribute off you go, you know, things like uh, Ede, I call it Ede, uh, you go Squire 1, Squire 2, bring out the Dark 1, then you Tribute both, you get the effect, or if you have, you know, depending upon the setup of your field, you can Tribute this, get the effect, because it's the Dark you're Tributing for Mega Caius, so yeah. It definitely is very, comes in handy, and I do like the Thessalos for first turn type of plays. It, it still comes in handy. Granted, you have no fire tokens in the deck or fire monsters to tribute to get its second effect, but it's still very good. So I definitely like these. This is definitely a staple in the deck. This I'm play testing out still, but I do like it as a one-up in the deck. It's good uh, early in the duel. Um, it's still good late in the duel because it can rip things out of your opponent's hand, and I've even had it go for games sometimes. My opponent may have low life points. I, I tribute this. I don't have an attack, and I just whip a card from their hand and win the duel there. And it's enough to win. So definitely I like those two, Thessalos and Caius. These are definitely I like in the deck for the Mega Monarchs I run. Uh, then the one card I'm trying out is I'm trying one Karaz and one Majesty's Fiend. My old secret one that I've had for about two years now, back when I was originally going to build Monarchs or an anti-meta deck. But Van Majesty's Fiend has come in handy a lot. I really, really do like the Majesty's Fiend. I have thought about, mind you, bumping him up to two of um, I tried Vanity's Fiend, and then I tried Majesty's Fiend, and I kind of said to myself, okay, which one's working out a little bit better for me after playing this deck for about now a week? And I found out that Majesty's Fiend put in a little bit more work than Vanity's Fiend, just a little bit more. Um, it, it helped out a lot, a little bit more, uh, and really helped the deck out along, and it's trying to combat meta type of decks. Granted, the meta's kind of changed a little bit now because of the emergency ban list, but still, it does come in handy, and I do like it. The Karaz is a card that I'm thinking about dropping from the deck. I really am, but I'm always 50-50 on him. Um, I still need to playtest him some more, even though after playtesting this deck and playing it with around with it for a while now, um, I'm still 50-50, so I'd love to hear your remarks on Karaz for you guys. But yes, I definitely like the one Majesty's Fiend and the one Karaz as of right now. Um, but Karaz is... Eh, I'm still debating about him. If I should add an extra Majesty's Fiend or a Vandy's Fiend or drop the Karaz altogether. Still debating about that. Need to play test and just play around with it. Next we have three Ede. I believe it's called. And three Edeos. Um, these are pretty much one of your main 
reasons of tribute fodder. Um, you have the vassals, which we don't run in the deck really. Uh, I mainly just run the squires because they really come in handy. But you can go your main one of your main plays with E at A is you just go this normal summon this special summon this from the deck. You have two tribute fodder, so you so you can tribute fodder for any of the big guys. Uh, but if you have um, you know uh, domain on the of the monarchs out, then you only contribute. You can use just one tribute. It really comes in handy. Uh, so I definitely like that for that reason. It really gives the deck. Uh, good tribute fodder that really works well, very well in the deck. And then you can banish, you know, Ede from the graveyard, bring this back, um, you know, have a tribute fodder if you have domain up, or you can bring something back like the trap, and then you could tribute again. Uh, gives consistent fodder to the deck. Also, when he goes to the graveyard, the cool thing is you can freaking just get a banished trap card. So I've set up sometimes when I'm banishing things, uh, like, hey, say they destroyed my one march, I banish the march, then I'll bring back the Ede. Uh, they, you know, then I tribute, then I get the march, then I activate the march. So definitely comes in handy. I do fully like these, the ratio of three and three for this deck. Uh, some people I know like only running two of him, and I've considered running two just Adios, but I definitely have the three because it makes the deck a little bit more consistent in what it does overall. So three Ede and three Adios. And they look really cool. I have to admit, all the artwork on these new monarchs looks amazing. Uh, for hand traps, I like running the deck two max C. And two Effect Veiler. Uh, some people may like running three Max C in the deck and dropping Effect Veiler or just running Max C and no Effect Veiler. My philosophy throughout the course of Yu Gi Oh! history and these cards being legal is I like running the Max C and Effect Veiler because if you activate Max C, you have something to draw into to stop their play. Um, so that's the reason I like running the two Effect Veiler for that matter. If you, if you don't want to, you can just drop this and then keep this and maybe add something else to the deck. It's up to you as a player to decide. But I definitely like the two max C and the two effect veiler. The effect veiler can stop things, get around things, and the two ma and the max C gives the deck some draw power for the deck. So I definitely like the two max C and the two effect veiler for the deck. Then I run this amazing freaking draw card, three panisium of the Modux. Uh This card's amazing. Uh, I can't say much more about it. It's amazing. You get to pitch a card. Optimally, you can pitch the Prime Monarch so you can get them in the graveyard, set up for Tribute Fodder. Uh, so you get to draw two cards off that for free. Uh, then you get to banish this card from your graveyard, pretty much. It, you can banish it. Then you can you know, give your punch, say, sh uh, reveal to your opponent from your deck three of the Monarch Spell Traps. And then you could say, hey, choose which one. Sometimes you can stack the odds, you know, say, hey, I don't have the, you know, the Prime. I don't have the Prime yet, you know, the... Um, Excuse me, domain of the monarchs. Domain, so I can be like, hey, here's three domain. Hit me. <laughs> or sometimes what I do is I'll just go, instead I'll go three uh, tenacity and if I want to search something out because I still have a monarch in my hand. Just just depends upon the feel, but it's really good. Um, great, great draw card, I have to admit, at the end of the day. Very, very good. And it can make good hands great and make bad hands good. Uh, just off that one card. Um, next we run... Three Tenacity, another search card for the deck, kind of. Um, very good card, amazing card. You can pretty much help search out just about anything. It's it's an amazing card, I have to admit that. Just helps thin your deck out more and be speedier and faster. Uh, then we have Three Domain. Um, I know I've talked to some players ever since the emergency ban list came out a couple of, you know, a while ago. And some people say you should just run two Domain now and then maybe run some traps. Personally, I find that the play with this deck is you want to get Domain and March out as quickly as possible. I have thought about running maybe two Domain and two March instead, um, or some ratio. I really want to run more than one March uh, because it, it, it's kind of it's a really, it's one of the mainstays. This and March are the best spell cards next to what can I say? They're all good spell cards, <laughs> but you understand what I'm trying to say. It really helps out with the deck. So three Domain, really good card because you get the bonus attack when you attack. Um, you also get, you know, to level down. It pretty much used the card, the old card called Level Down, which pretty much means I can, you know, take two stars off my monster and tribute summon for just a level one. And then you get 800 boost. Then you get to, you know, your opponent can't use your extra deck because we don't even use an extra deck with this deck. So, oh, amazing card. Uh, next, I run three Stormforth. Uh, staple in this deck. Great card. Doesn't target. Quick play. Spell. What more is there about to say about Monarch Stormforth? It's an amazing card. So three Monarch Stormforth, solid card. 
This deck is very straightforward, as you can tell. Then for some one-ups, I run one March and one uh, Return of the Monarchs. I do like the Return of the Monarchs. It really comes in handy. Have thought about maybe running two March and one Return, uh, or maybe doing something else, like dropping the one for one for another March, maybe. Yeah, I'm still debating about all these things and possibilities. Uh, so I'm still debating about those in my head. Return's very good. Helps you search out your deck, thin out your deck, after you tribute. Really can come in handy. Uh, March is such a good card. Um, it's Ever since I saw that card originally in action, even back before when one of my friends was using like Frog Narcs uh, a couple or about a year or so ago when this card came out of Cosmo Blazer, I was just like, wow, I can't believe that's actually happened. That's a thing. But it's a very good card. Um, may bump it up to two. But yeah, I still like that. And the return is very good as well. Then for your other one as I run, uh, the one Foolish Burial, the one Reinforcement of the Army, and the one one for one. May drop Foolish, but I do like it in the deck. It's pretty solid. Re Rota to get you to your Eidos. And one for one just helps get you to your Eidos as well. I do like it though in the deck. It's really good. Eidos is your main target for that though. Uh, for your Traps, we run three of those. We run three, the Prime Monarch. Really good card has multiple capacities. Mainly you're going to use it for Tribute Fodder. That's your main thing, because when it's in the graveyard, you can use it for Tribute Fodder. Uh, secondly, I know some people like running this as a two of, and then maybe a second march. I have tried it out, and I may do it eventually, but I definitely like it as a three of in the deck as of right now. Um, still more play testing needs to be done, but the other effect is pretty comes comes in handy if you get like cloggy hands and whatnot. So, well, you can pretty much, you know, and I get a free draw, I guess you could say. Apologize, I had the hiccups in my for a second. But yes, guys, that is the deck. Uh, it's very straightforward. Like I said, it's a straightforward type of deck. There's no extra deck we run because most of your effects say that you need no extra deck. So we don't even run one. Um, yeah, I, I know some people may say, well, you should try this Monarch card out or that Monarch card out. And that's perfectly fine. But I'm still playtesting the deck and trying it out. So it's still a work in progress, but it's a solid work in progress. Uh, it's pretty much become one of my main decks to play right now because I really like the artwork. I really think it's really cool. Uh, you know, Ether and um, Edios look, and Erebus, excuse me, look really badass and cool. And the decks just overall function very well. You may say, well, does it get brick hands? It does get brick hands. Um, the thing is also I'll mention is it depends upon the matchup. Uh, maybe it's just me from playtesting, but I find that some matchups, the deck just kind of has a problem. Other matchups, it's very good. It just locks your opponent out and you're good to go. Um, and then also I'll mention quickly that if your opponent's deck does not revolve around the extra deck as much, so like many decks nowadays, they revolve around the extra deck. But Cosmos, for example, don't really use the extra deck unless they really want to. That can be a problem. And that's when you go to the side deck and pretty much try to figure out a way to beat Cosmos. But if you play your cards right, by the end of the night, you should be good. Uh, and it's a very powerful deck for... How much it is to put into the deck, which I put in 55 bucks. That's all I put into the deck. And I got a deck that is a very good solid deck that will probably be around for quite some time in going into Yu-Gi-Oh's future. So I would say it's a solid investment. Um, it's a solid investment just like Heroes were with Dark Law last year, I would say. So that's what I'll say about that. But till next time, guys, take care. Have fun dueling. Good luck dueling. And I'll see all of you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed this Monarch deck profile, guys. Take care, everybody.